I see a shivering penguin by Evelyn. Sparkling up your weekend. Oh, my feet are cold. Sequin Art, sponsors of CITV Weekends. It's that time again. It's time to attack some art. How's about creating some interesting views from the window with this greetings card idea? To be or not to be? That is the question. <laughs> well, I'll give you the answers with loads of tips on which pencils to use. And it's amazing the art attacks you can come up with with just a few sticks. How do you turn this lot, a pile of old broken toys, into a work of art? You turn them into marble statues. Look at that lot. Brilliant, aren't they? They really look like ancient Roman or Greek statuettes, even down to the authentic detail of having bits missing. <laughs> Priceless. You don't find these in a boot sale. <laughs> and they're simple to make in four easy parts. A four-part attack. First, choose the broken toy that you want to transform. Now, this doll has lost an arm. Oh. <laughs> so just seal over that hole with a bit of tape. There, that's better. <laughs> then scrunch up a length of newspaper and wrap it around the doll's legs. Just start at the bottom and twist her around, making a sort of newspaper wrap around her legs. This will eventually turn into flowing robes. Then just tape it at her waist. Then choose a box for the podium that the statue will stand on. This is a good sized box, so just taper into place on the top. Use lots of tape and it'll be nice and sturdy. Now, it's not looking very classical at the moment, is it? <laughs> we need to get sculpting. Newspaper's perfect for this because you can tear off just the amount you need and twist and fold it into any shape you like. So, scrunch up a small length of newspaper and tape one end to the doll's shoulder. Then drape it around her front, over the other shoulder and round the back, joining up with the first shoulder and tape this into place for the top part of her robe. Then do the same with other bits of newspaper ruching and wrapping them around the body and bottom half of your statue and they start to look like big folds in flowing material. Make them looser and wider as you get to the bottom of the skirt and tape them all in place. Yeah, it's looking good and if your doll has long hair, scoop it up and hold it in place with some tape like I've done here. Now you need to turn your newspaper into marble, and the secret is cotton wool. Take small pieces of cotton wool and tease them out so they're flat and thin. Then mix some PVA half and half with water. Paste it onto your statue and lay on the cotton wool. Then paste more mixture over the top. Go over the whole of the statue in this way, getting into all the folds. And you can even go over her hair as well make sure that it's a very thin layer over the face as you don't want to lose her features. And when you've covered the whole statue and it's dry, it will have gone rock hard, just like a real statue. And now it's ready to paint. Paint your statue white and then dab in some pale grey to give it a kind of mottled look. Go over the whole of your model, including her feet. But don't worry about putting any detail on at the moment. Then, in a slightly darker grey, paint on small crack lines. Go over her face, hair, the folds in her dress and even the podium.
looks like cracks in the stone. And when the cracks are dry, cover the whole statue in a layer of neat PVA glue. And when the PVA dries, it goes completely clear, adding to the marble effect. And there it is, a marble statue. And if you place it somewhere in your house to show it off, it really does look like an authentic ancient sculpture with its marble effect and bits missing. And you can turn any old broken toy or doll or action figure into a masterpiece. How about these two fighting gladiators with a cardboard sword and shields and I've put on some newspaper tunics there? Or what about this centaur? Half a toy horse and half an action figure. Or this classical bust. And this used to be one of those model heads that you can put makeup on. Try it yourself. Marble statues. <laughs> Cross hatching. Ah, now this technique is brilliant for shading your pictures. You can do it in pen, pencils, or even sticks. Time for a big art attack. To be or not to be. Now, don't worry, I'm not about to go off on a Shakespeare recital. I'm talking to be or not to be. Or maybe even to H or even HB. You know, pencils. Most pencils have an H or B printed at the end of them to tell you what type they are. In fact, this set ranges from 6H to 6B. So, OK, which one do you choose? Well, it depends what you want to draw. For an H pencil, think hard tip. H is for hard. So the more H, 2H, 4H, 6H, the harder the tip. And this hard tip gives you a fine, precise line which is perfect for technical drawings. In fact, it's perfect for your schoolwork. So, an H pencil is a hard fine line. A B pencil 
is a different beast. Think B for black or B for bold. The more B, 2B, 4B, 6B, the more blacker and bolder the line is. See this? Look at that. Real black, bold line. And also think B is for blend. Watch this. You can actually smudge the line very easily with your finger to help with that shading effect. Not so good for schoolwork, though, as it can get smudged and messy very easily. But it is perfect for sketching and drawing. I'm going to use a 5B. Watch this. So you've got nice, strong black lines. And I always find with these B pencils, you don't have to be too precise when you're sketching. You can just throw the line on and give it a little smudge here and there. Just blend it a bit. Soften it up. So whereas the H is quite hard, the B is actually quite soft. Now, I expect you can tell what it is I'm drawing by now. <laughs> Just adding some features and some shading down the side of the face. I make it nice and fairy. And some fair on the body as well. Again, nice big black lines, very bold and black. B is for bold and black. And of course, B is for blend. So just smudge those lines to blend your shading. Just going to add in the vine that he's swinging from. And this blending or smudging is also a great effect just to hint at backgrounds. See that? Just smudging my finger there and it creates a sort of background in the distance. And there it is. So don't forget, when you're choosing a pencil, H is for hard tip, which is for fine, precise diagrams, and also think H is for homework diagrams, and B is for black, bold and blend, great for sketching. And the most versatile pencil of all? This one, the HB. Not too black, not too hard, not too smudgy, just about right for most things. Try it yourself, experiment with different types of pencils. People ask me, who are my favourite artists? Who do I get inspiration from? Well, there's Toulouse-Lautrec, the famous French Impressionist, brilliant. There's Walt Disney, a genius with cartoon characters. And there's you lot. Your art attacks are totally inspirational to me. And I keep them here in my art attack gallery. Have a look at this lot. A brilliant piece of artwork by Class 4B. Each pupil has designed their own circle and then put them all together. This shows great teamwork. <laughs> nice one, guys. Hey, look at this fish created by Amber. She's used wire to make the outline of the fish and then used lots of different materials to fill in the body, making a really unusual art attack. Beautiful. Now, Alfred's landscape has been done using pen and watercolour, and the style he's used gives this picture a real sense of movement. Looks like a windy day, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Fabulous watercolour picture there, Alfred. Now, watercolours are just brilliant for creating delicate washes and transparent effects like in Alfred's picture. But what if you want to paint more solid colours in your pictures? Well, you don't need to spend ages painting on layers of watercolour paint. Use some of this stuff instead. Gouache paint. It's a type of watercolour, but it gives a flatter, more solid effect. Now, you can use a little bit of water to get it all charged up and moving. And the idea is to paint large, flat areas like that. And it covers really well without having to keep going over it. It feels a lot different to watercolour, a lot thicker, but gives this real 
classy finish. Very thick. And unlike ordinary watercolour paint, gouache paint dries fairly quickly, which means you can go over your painting and add fine detail with more paint or pens or even pencils, like that. See that? And you can do it a lot quicker than you'd be able to do this with ordinary watercolour. Nice one. So, OK, where were we? Oh, yes. Now, look at this, a colourful bowl of mixed fruit. This fab still life by Jack has been done using wax cranes, which are one of my personal favourite things to use. And this picture by Hannah is absolutely brilliant. I think lots of people live in these houses because there are lots of windows. And aren't they lucky? They live next door to two lovely swans. <laughs> hey, look at this. Eleanor has created her picture by using watercolour, crayon and pencil. I love the use of white crayon used for highlights. Great art attack. And here's a clever design for a greetings card. Zoe has cut a hole in the front of the card and stuck on seaweed shapes, giving the illusion of looking through a sort of window of fish. Oh, love that card with a window in it, Zoe. Hey, that's given me a great idea for a card with a window in it. Now, you're going to need some clear plastic for this. You can use a plastic lid or plastic from other packaging, or you can just buy sheets of acetate quite cheaply from stationers. Then, here's what to do. Wrap some tape around some scissors and score a line down the middle of your plastic so that you can fold it in half neatly. So there's the score. And there's the fold. On the right hand half of your sheet, paint on a thin layer of PVA glue. Just slop it on and cover the whole of one side. Then using coloured ink, paint on a design. Now keep it simple. Make it a view from a window or a landscape. This is going to be a kind of view from a spaceship. So I'm doing a kind of planet. Now you don't have to be neat as it all adds to the effect. Fill in the sky with some nice blue ink, just blob it on and you could even add a little water to help you spread the ink. Yeah just a touch though, not too much otherwise it'll be swishing all over the place. Add in a little bit more detail there. Then I'm going to leave this one side to dry. In the meantime, take some thin card and draw on some characters. Now you need characters that you'd expect to see through the window. So how about some weird looking aliens? Maybe a rocket? And the message for your greetings card? Something like, happy birthday. You can do whatever you like. And when you've done your characters and your words, colour them in and then cut them out. And when your glue design is completely dry, fold it in half again, tape around two of the sides to make a kind of pocket, and then place your characters inside. So just slip them in like that, and maybe pop in a bit of glitter as well. Then carefully tape along the last edge to seal the pocket. Then fold another piece of thin card in half and glue your window to the front. Line it up and on it goes. And when you've done all that, you have a fantastic window card. And as you can see, I've added a paper frame to hide the tape around the edge. Then give it a shake and all the characters and the glitter move around. Look at that. All zooming through space. Brilliant. And there are all sorts of window views you can do. How about a safari view? Again, give it a shake and off they charge. <laughs> or what about an undersea view? And again, give it a shake. And there they dance underwater. And what about this jungle view? And look at this, a shake and parrots everywhere. Look at that. Very clever. Try it yourself, window cards. And don't forget you can check out the website for this and all the other artists in the show. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ra! <laughs>